So. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, are you ready for session two? <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So let me give the notice again. Um, for those who join after the conference started, so please carefully read the notice on the screen. If you have any questions for speakers, please post them in Q&A section on Zoom. Moderators will collect them for discussion. If you have any comments to share, please post them in the chat. Please click it and you can tune in on English, Korean, and Greek channel. From now on, we have Bogor Finnegan. Hello there. Good, uh, good morning or good afternoon where you are. Uh, well, thanks very much. I'm, I'm delighted. It's been a very stimulating morning so far. far. And I think it's, uh, it's great to have this opportunity to cross borders. Um, we have a session here which deals with two themes. That's uh, citizenship, education, vulnerable groups and human rights. And then democracy and uh, citizenship education. We're joined by the seven people who are going to be presenting from the US, from Greece, and Costa Rica. And I, th I think even though these are separate themes, they're obviously intimately connected. And uh, I, th I think they speak to the, the crisis that people have mentioned a couple of times already, probably more accurately to talk about a poly crisis. And I look forward to what, what our speakers have to say about dealing with a complex world, uh, an unequal world in terms of both wealth and power a precarious world in terms of society and the environment, and also how we might begin to tackle a global culture of distrust in order to take back a sense of the future. And I think the type of discussion we're having about learning cities really speaks to that, to, to reimagine the city as a space of democracy. So we have the, the seven speakers will take up issues of theory and practice, the city and the society, science and social movements, and... Uh, I think feed us with um, with a, a sense of how an imaginative and intellectual leap might help us reimagine uh, learning and adult education. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to invite uh, Professor Alexis Kokos from the Open uh, the Hellenic Open University. He's a very well known figure in uh, European adult education, also a key thinker in terms of transformative learning and some of the dialogue that's happening between. Europe and America on, the, on that topic. Uh, he has a particular interest in how critical thinking can be fostered through uh, aesthetic experience. So uh, I'm going to pass over to you, Alexis. Thanks very much. Can you hear me? We've got 15 yes. minutes. Yes, thank you very much, Fergal, and so nice to meet you and all the other colleagues in this conference. So, uh, dear colleagues, I suppose that all of us share the idea that we live in a world where democracy suffers. Some fundamental reasons refer to economic inequality, unemployment, and exploitation of the poor. In addition, there are further major problems such as intolerance, violence, fundamentalism in all sorts of domains, populism, as well as the devastating influence of mass culture. So Alexa, here, yeah, we second. have a problem, we have a Hold problem with the slides. Just one second. Thank you. And I can see some comments in the chat and I'll speak to them in a second. No. Thanks for patience. May I continue now? Uh, yeah, you're, you need to share it fully. Can our host help with that? Okay. Okay, so okay. within this context of um, fundamentalism, violence, intolerance, populism, etc. Again. I, I, Human I think... rights, yeah, that's right. Human rights of freedom, 
justice and tolerance, enlightenment, and equality of opportunities are violated to a large extent. All of these problems affect mainly the vulnerable social groups, the unemployed, the ill, people in the third age, refugees and migrants, as well as the social, ethnical and religious minorities. People of vulnerable groups feel treated and despised. They become increasingly passive and silent. Their social and individual consciousness atrophies. As a result, an imperative need arises to enhance active citizenship, understood as a field where people undertake their role of aware and responsible citizens. They participate in various domains of social and political life. They influence the public discourse and the decision-making processes that concern them, as well as they formulate common action plans that respond to their vital interests. Educational institutions and organizations, mainly adult education ones, may contribute to this process. They can function as focal points where people can meet, communicate, learn together, participate in democratic dialogical processes, perceive and challenge the problematic assumptions they have embraced, and become interested and involved in public affairs. As adult education settings can become crucial microcosms where learners are equipped with the necessary capabilities to realize and exercise their rights and take control of their lives. However, there are considerable difficulties in this process, and I would like to underline these difficulties. The participation of the vulnerable groups in adult education activities is very low. For example, in uh, 2018, only 4.3 of low educated adults in the European Union aged between 25 and 64 years old, participated in adult education, while the corresponding share of all adults was 11.1. Two main reasons can be identified. The first reason is that most of the governments do not give emphasis on the reinforcement of the participation of these groups in adult education. Second reason is the vulnerable group's own attitude towards adult education. Given that the vulnerable groups are not familiar with the educational practices due to their socialization, of course, they are often distanced from participating in them. Consequently, one of the major concerns of organizations, social movements, and educators who struggle for the development of citizenship and democracy should be the increase of opportunities and motives for vulnerable groups regarding their participation in adult education. However, even when the members of the vulnerable groups participate in adult education, they typically face additional inherent constraints in undertaking initiatives regarding their learning choices and actions, and in turn, could uh, which in turn could reinforce their capabilities pertaining to active participation in society. More specifically, learners from vulnerable groups often adopt the role of the traditional passive learner 
thereby distancing themselves from actually getting involved in dialogue within their learning group or performing responsibilities concerning the aims and the teaching strategy of their studies. Freire ident identified this phenomenon as culture of silence, that is, a situation where vulnerable groups are silent in the sense that they are forbidden to participate creatively in social life. They have no historical consciousness of their oppressive sociocultural condition. They take it for granted and are unable to understand that this is the cause of their misery. What is more, they cannot consider that they could become themselves active subjects who, through learning and action, would attempt to transform the societal status quo. Hereby, according to Freire, what the educators should seek is, on the one hand, to stimulate an open democratic dialogue in the classroom, and on the other hand, to gradually reduce their intervention so that learners take an active role. Mezirov, in turn, focused on another crucial issue. Even assuming that a number of learners decide to take the initiative to be involved into a critical mode of learning, it is not self-evident that they will follow the appropriate route. This can happen because learners are often unable to make clear diagnosis of their own learning needs and formulate their own learning goals. To the extent that this self-knowledge is missing and learners are not fully aware of their own best interests, then participatory learning may be proved practically disoriented. And learners may need help in order to become aware of the cultural and societal forces that inhibit them to recognize their interests. Accordingly, both Freire and Mezirov intensively explored ways that might help vulnerable learners to take an increasingly active role within processes of transformative learning. Freire and Mezirov's ideas, together, of course, with similar contributions of indicatively Granton, Fleming, Brookfield, or Kagan. These ideas can formulate a framework of guidelines that are addressed to emancipatory adult educators. First, an adult educator should progressively reduce the learner's dependency on him or her. This includes helping the learners understand how to use learning resources, assist them to define their authentic learning needs, expand the range, the range of their options, emphasize experiential participative instructional methods, and reinforce learners' self-concept. Second, an adult educator should examine his or her students' learning capacities and avoid creating learning designs that might be asking them to move at a rate that would be unsustainable for them. Third, the learning process should be imbued by recognition, a notion understood as a, an interpersonal process of caring and support that builds reciprocal self-respect, self-esteem, and self-confidence. Fourth, an adult educator should attempt to establish a supportive, meaningful, and empathetic learning environment that may allow participants to share information openly and achieve mutual and consensual understanding. Fifth, humility and openness of educators 
are essential within this process. Finally, the value judgments of educators themselves are open to criticism and re-evaluation. Concluding, concludingly, the challenge for adult educators is to initially assist their learners, but then progressively enable them to rely on their own strengths so that they may eventually make their own way in critically dealing with the subject matters at hand. In doing so, learners from vulnerable groups might become more capable of participating in the learning process, as well as being critically reflective on their own and others' assumptions. Accordingly, they could become aware of the social conditions that influence their lives and be empowered to participate in the society as active citizens and fight for human rights. Thank you for your attention. Thanks very much, Alexis. That's a very comprehensive and useful overview. Great to get us started in this session. If people want to address uh, comments and questions in the chat or in the Q&A section, please do so. <clears throat> while while uh, for, we're going to now move on to the second part of this, this uh, section, which is the city presentation from the municipality of Heraklion. And uh, I think it's going to be led by Angelakis Nikolaus, um, who's the Deputy Mayor of Education, Lifelong Learning and Youth. Uh, it's a presentation has also been done by Sisamakis Georgius, Deputy Mayor of De Development Planning, Digital Transformation, Rural Development, and Papadaki Irini, Deputy Mayor of Social Services. So if you could uh, share your screen, just, just one thing that has come through from the moderators. If you hit F5 when you're sharing your screen, it will take up the, the full space. So thanks very much. I look forward to uh, hearing your contribution. Good afternoon from Ilakion. Can you hear me? Okay. I share the screen. I share a text in, in PDF. Uh... Lovely. Okay. As soon as I see it, I'll let you know and I'll then mute myself. There we are. It's coming up. Okay. I think, yeah, I think that's that's fine. Yep, that's perfect. Okay. Thank you very much, Nikolaus. Look forward to hearing your what you have to say. Thank you. Okay. Can, can I start the introduction? Yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation to attend the online conference of uh, strengthening citizenship education at local level. I must say that uh, we are very glad hearing from the distinguished educational experts and the other members of the cluster the good practices at this current issue. Heraklion, as many of the UNESCO Global Network of Learning Cities members around the world, face severe challenges due to the coronavirus pandemic. The most important of them being how to keep the people informed and educated in order to face this crisis effectively. This process actually didn't stop. Distance working, distance learning and work meeting became a part of our everyday lives. The Ministry of Education promoted online learning for all students in all education levels across the country. So, at the local level also, we took action to ensure that the learning process won't stop during the pandemic. Trying to minimize the impact of school closures, particularly for more vulnerable and uh, disadvantaged communities, we ensured that social tutorial lessons continue during lockdown through remote learning. So we proceeded to relevant actions. We took a, a big digital step, developing our e-services for citizens. We provide helpline for vulnerable groups, the elderly and the disabled. Also assistance at home for the financially weak residents and for those who cannot or are not allowed 
to move from their homes because of the pandemic lockdown. That means medical and the pharmaceutical care and provision of the essential supplies and the handling administrative cases for them. In addition, the municipality made rapid listing and supply of the essentials means of protection against coronavirus for municipal employees. During the crisis, many citizens faced stress and uh, psychological pressure, mental dis disorders and internet addiction due to the isolation. Those are serious issues which can't be ignored. The Center of Prevention and Promotion of Psy Psychosocial Health, KESAN as we call it, took actions to connect parents, teachers and students with each other. The most popular program of KESAN is the online platform KESAN to Spitisu, means KESAN like your home. This platform contains useful information, instructions and guiding for COVID-19 pandemic and a rich selection of educational and recreational topics for creative use of free time for the days of lockdown. The Municipal Athletic Department launched gymnastic programs every day, broadcasted via YouTube towards citizens to work out at home and stay healthy. Several cultural events are broadcasted on the municipality's cultural YouTube channel. Also, as public authority through the municipal website and YouTube channels, we supply more and more information, events, and help for citizens' homes. And finally, the Lifelong Learning Center, which has been established as a part of the Municipal Department of Education and Lifelong Learning, became a new cycle of lifelong learning programs of general education for all members of the society with particular focus on vulnerable social groups, such as the unemployed, refugees, migrants, Roma, elderly, and people with disabilities. From the beginning of 2020, 865 enrollments have been applied for more than 25 seminars on citizenship education, about the environment and recycling, health, education, and first aid seminars, seminars for new entrepreneurs, seminars for ICT skills in businesses, foreign languages, Greek language, etc. That's why we will try to provide more computer integrated programs through the Municipal Lifelong Learning Center in the future, improving technological skills and learning how to use educational platforms. That will open the window of digital learning and training, which can lead also to better work opportunities. Dear friends, nowadays, as we did in spring at the first lockdown time, we try to mitigate the impact localized closures and uh, the fear of the economic uncertainty those closures bring to people's lives, particularly for more vulnerable and disadvantaged communities. And now, let me introduce my colleague, Deputy Mayor, Mr. George Susamakis, that uh, present to you this first that I said to you before, the step that we took uh, developing our e-services for citizens. Thank you, Nicholas. Please go ahead. You have Hello? Can you yes. hear me? Yes, please go ahead. It's you five more minutes. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Thanks for the invitation. It's so nice to be with you. Uh, congrats for the great digital conference. Uh, hope you're coming to you with you and uh, healthy. Uh, I will present you what already uh, Nico said, integration of digital services and citizens education in the COVID-19 crisis. Well, everybody, we know that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic posed new challenges and facilitated large scale of transitions. The demand for digital services has increased and led millions of people around the world to work remotely. 
Information and communication technologies have, uh, have met uh, this challenge by ensuring the uninterrupted operation of service and businesses. Every organization and citizens respond with different effectiveness to the challenge of digital transformation of public service. In Greece, the difficulties of having access to internet and being capable of using the digital services have been observed. This difference were, were determined by the income level, the age, the gender, or even the place of residence. The challenge to create simple digital services for all citizens, while simultaneously decrease the level of digital illiteracy, is a priority for the municipality of Heraklion. Internet access must be recognized as a right of citizens and not simply as an infrastructure. The municipality of Heraklion has a strategic plan for digital transformation and a clear roadmap for human-centered services. The first concern is to ensure the smooth operation of the services of the municipality, which is uh, attended by numerous applications that have been developed in the framework of project Heraklion Smart City using free open source software. Management of uh, citizen request services. There are more than uh, 163 electronic services offered by the municipality of Heraklion, uh, available to all citizens, out of which 35 uh, are completely digital and the desired certificate is directly available online. It has been note, noted that from March, there are an increase of electronic requests from citizens, but 50%, 50%, which may be due to COVID-19 policy, by appointment only in visiting the offices. To face this difficult challenge, the municipality improved the provision of electronic service to the municipality for the, for the citizens by providing 35-level service, services, as we said uh, above. Uh, the electronic payment were activated, making make it easy for citizens to pay their bills. Electronic applications for 100 free parking spaces were made accessible in the city center for citizens living in the area, receiving the permits as beneficiaries uh, exclusively electronically. The municipality strengthened its, wire, its wireless network by adding 12 new nodes to the already largest municipality wireless network in Greece, with over 150 nodes. On March, 34 cultural events and performances were made digital, presented on one, the one YouTube channel of the Vikele Municipality Library, and watched so far by over 6,000 digital viewers. On April, another digital channel uh, was created for citizen recreation with 23 videos, 16 music concerts, three theatrical performance and two art exhibitions. The digital channel Heraklion Art Culture was created in YouTube. From April to August, the channel has 68,300 68, views. Apart from Greece, other countries view the YouTube channel, such as Spain, Germany, Serbia, and etc. Furthermore, in order to offer quality digital performances to the citizen and support the artist, the Heraklion municipality converted its own main festival, create a history of five plus one cultures and add, add on the road uh, into digital. 72 productions will be presented from September till April 21. The internet channel will be enriched by this new production. Now, citizen part participation, participation to the conference. The municipality using the free software platform GZ has its own teleconference system installed in its own data center where committees take place with citizen participation, technical program uh, consultations committee, urban local group committee, strategic plan committee. So far, 40 councils and committee teleconference have been held with uh, uh, almost 500 uh, participants uh, elected and employees with a total duration of uh, almost uh, 3,000 minutes. All these actions contribute to citizenship, education, and practice supporting the digital transformation of the municipality of Heraklion for its citizens and strengthening even more the identity of Heraklion as a smart digital city. Those uh, similar things from me. And uh, now, uh, Rena Papadaki, the other uh, vice mayor, will present you uh, his topic.
thank you for me. That's one thing. I, we're please be careful with time. Thank you. You're, you're very well. Thank you. I'm very pleased to. I'm Rena Papandaki, Deputy Mayor of uh, Social Services of Municipality of Heraklion. I'm very pleased to participate in this special event and I would like to thank you for this opportunity. An issue which I believe concerns an important part of our lives today and that uh, we are particularly interested in is the interaction of generations, the communication and dialogue between different age groups. There are plenty of benefits to receive from the intergenerational cooperation. One of them is the transfer of knowledge from one generation to another, the intergenerational learning as we call it. This term describes the way in which people of all ages can coexist in the same learning environment, that is to learn with each other and from each to other, an important part of lifelong learning where different generations can acquire skills, values and knowledge. It is valuable as it uh, contributes to the development of solidarity and mutual understanding, to the strengthening of social cohesion, to the treatment of discrimination and to the promotion of diversity as a factor that enriches life. Before the outbreak of the pandemic, we had the chance to organize a series of events in collaboration with the Archaeological Museum which were very exciting and successful. The action took place last Christmas when we organized storytelling events with the participation of elderly people from the centers from open protection of the elderly of the municipality of Heraklion. During the events, grandparents uh, narrated stories about Christmas to elementary school children. The active beneficiaries had the opportunity and the joy to get in touch with the children and to transfer them the customs and tradition of Christmas as they had experienced them during their own childhood. They shared their memories of past times and revived the tales of their own grandmothers. Stories of preparation of traditional sweets and food Stories of goblins and of the traditional carols. They sang house to house in their neighborhoods. In addition, they taught the children the craft of handmade knitted ornaments and Christmas sweets. The children traveled in time through the narrations of the elderly. They enjoyed participating, asking questions, making their own remarks, and crafting handmade ornaments. Taking place in the unique environment of archaeological museum of our city, both the passion and joy of the elderly who pass their knowledge to young children and the dedication and interest of children who listen in complete silence to their stories made a deeply moving experience. Unfortunately, the pandemic changed our next plans. We hope that the conditions, the conditions uh, will soon allow us to organize similar events and to build bridges of communication between the elderly and young in an effort to bring different generations closer, giving the opportunity to the elderly to transfer their, their experiences to the younger generation and inversely giving the chance to the younger ones to increase their level of awareness towards the elderly is, I think, an invaluable lesson. I have some photos I can, I don't know if I can show you. And uh, thank you very much. Maybe, maybe. Uh, um, Later, I think. I, thank you. I, thank you thank very you. much thank for you. your very interesting presentation from Heraklion. Much appreciated. Thank you. Goodbye. F. Harrison. Um, Thank you very much thank you. for giving us this uh, uh, time and thank you very much for this conference. 
Uh, we are very glad to participate in the global uh, uh, UNESCO Global Network, and uh, we hope we will see you again, not in the conditions, but live. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, so a compliment to the contribution from our colleagues in Heraklion uh, is Mr. Freddy Maurizio Montanero Mora's presentation from the city of Escajou, which uh, has a wonderful um, <laughs> city uh, emblem, very unusual. It's a flying witch, very, very, uh, it's very striking. So I look, I look forward to, to this presentation and uh, Freddie, I'm going to move over to you now. Can you can you unmute yourself? Thank you. Lovely. You've ten minutes. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity. It's been quite a um, an experience to connect, as as a, many of uh, many of you might happen. Um, but uh, finally, uh, we got it made. Um, my name is uh, Fred Mauricio Montero. I am the responsible for social, cultural, and educational services from the municipality of Escazú. Um, I am an anthropologist, political scientist, and I also studied teaching and educational management. Uh, I'm going to share my presentation. And just a reminder, hit F5 once it's up there, so it goes full screen. Thank you. I don't get it. Compositing. OK. Visible there. Thank you. Please continue. Ready? OK. So Escazú, it's a, a land of contrast. It's a, a, a little city. It is only 34 and 49 uh, square kilometers. We have 70,000 inhabitants, but we have um, a land altitude that goes from 900 uh, to 2,400 meters above sea level. It creates a lot of different um, uh, ways of living of our, of our population. We are the main hub of commercial, banking, and gastronomy and hotel industry at the capital of San Jose. We have also the wealthiest neighborhoods in the city, but at the same time, we have side by side, a very impoverished communities living in our communities. Uh, about 16% of the population of the territory are uh, international migrants. Uh, especially coming from Nicaragua, Colombia, and Venezuela. We also have uh, strong rural and peasant tradition communities up in the mountains who are still present, uh, uh, working especially uh, uh, in the agricultural uh, uh, side. Uh, so all these create a big challenge. The challenge is how to promote a local sense of belonging in this context where you have so many differences and how to foster local and social integration and teamwork on behalf of the community, where there are a lot of groups that create a lot of distrust among themselves. This is the seal of the city that I wanted also to share with you. Uh, we have that flying witch, and I wanted, I wanted to explain to you why we have this seal. Uh, in the pre-colonial pre times, there were uh, the indigenous women who, um, with uh, their uh, knowledge of healing, uh, uh, they heal a lot of people and the city became very famous for these healers, female healers. And, and they were also uh, known as witches, but good witches. And this is uh, the official seal that we have now in the city. And you have the label up that says, Escazú City of Witches, of Female Witches. Um, the, the next, um, the next, uh, okay, I wanted to share also this uh, important um, uh, part of our city is that Escazú, it's uh, the hub also of the cultural heritage of the ox herding and ox cart tradition that was proclaimed by UNESCO as one of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. 
uh, we have uh, these parades of peasants with the ox carts that uh, have this um, tradition of, so, of craft painting. <clears throat> that is one of the main um, a, a cultural creations that create pride a, for our community. Next one, please. So in, in this context, what I want to talk to you about is what is citizenship education for our city? Uh, the, the, these are like the, the main uh, aspect that we've been uh, trying to um, focus on. Fostering intercultural dialogue, focusing municipal services on cultural, economic, and social vulnerable communities, straining community self-esteem, through the recognition of local identities and the sense of belonging, promoting gender equality throughout all social community organizations, integrating migrants and refugees to the ongoing community social life. It's important also to uh, explain that here in Costa Rica, formal education is responsible only for the central government. So we work, especially at the in the municipal level, a non-formal education and also what we call the open education, that it's the uh, adult education, people who uh, abandoned the formal education and then municipal services attend them to prepare them for the exams that they have to uh, take uh, in order to complete their um, uh, formal education. Uh, uh, now I'm going to uh, share with you some examples of activity that we've been doing in citizen education. Uh, there's a lot of things to, to uh, a lot of different examples that it could uh, address, but now I'm going to concentrate on in, the, in these three. Uh, first, I want to share with you the Municipal Women's School of, Citizen, of, of Citizenship and Leadership. Um, one of the aspects that we have in our community is that there are very few women uh, working in prominent positions in the associations, in all the uh, organizations of the community. So that's the reason why we created this school. This school, uh, the students have to go through uh, a, a process of learning that takes about two years. And we did it with an agreement with the University of Costa Rica. Um, they study a different uh, uh, aspects such as leadership and gender, social communication, uh, social conflict resolution, management strategies, and also uh, there's an aspect very important that is peer learning from local social organizations led by women. So there, there's a, an opportunity to share and, 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 and also uh, uh, create um, uh, social awareness among themselves and, and, and share uh, experiences in how it's about to uh, uh, lead a social organization by women. Uh, we, uh, uh, we have uh, different uh, female leaders coming from all kinds of organizations, such as neighborhood associations, religious groups, political parties, cooperatives, uh, productive ventures, environmental associations, and also uh, cultural associations. This has created a big impact in the position of women in, uh, in local groups uh, in our city. Next one, please. Uh, the other aspect is to foster creativity and innovation through our municipal school of arts. Uh, we work on uh, arts, but also try to foster the traditional ways of creating and innovating. Uh, we we uh, foster not only the what we call like uh, the professional arts, but also the folk arts, uh, the folk expressions that are part also of. Um, uh, of our traditions. As you can see, the, the, the children playing with the, the traditional rhythms of our city. Next one, please. The other aspect that I wanted to share with you is how we foster migrant and refugee social integration. 
we work specially with children and we use football as uh, our um, a, the way of promoting values such as teamwork respect to social and cultural differences gender awareness and create life skills in in children who come from communities that are multinational in, in our in our city we're talking about communities about neighborhoods where about 30 40 percent of the people who live there are migrants and there's a lot of problems of misunderstanding about uh, between national and migrants uh, families and uh, a lot of stereotypes uh, and we're talking about communities that are very impoverished so uh, this is a way that we work together with children male and female uh, working together not to create a uh, professional football players uh, the the aim of this uh, uh, project is to educate values through football and in, in, in promoting integration, respect, and also uh, this program has a, um, a, a, a service of um, a scholarships for education that uh, we um, offer for the students that um, for, for, for the participants of these groups. Uh, next one. And this is the, the last example that I wanted to share with you. Uh, we created in the municipality a local network of social corporate uh, responsibility. We have about uh, 60 uh, big companies uh, that are um, located in our city and uh, we created this uh, network where uh, we put together all the different uh, projects of social corporate responsibility and we coordinate them uh, from the unit uh, from the municipality uh, and, and we uh, we put all these uh, initiatives in, in order with our municipal development plan and that has given us a, a big opportunity to really uh, take advantage of all the, the different initiatives that uh, the, 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 the corporates have. And in this way, um, we've been uh, uh, developing different kind of projects uh, in, the, in the areas of employment, social and educational issues, uh, environmental and risk management, cultural, artistic, and recreation issues. All these projects that we uh, put together with the cooperation of the uh, private sector, we aim the impact to the uh, vulnerable communities. And, and it's very interesting because through these projects, you have employees from the private sector working together with neighbors municipal officials uh, developing and crafting together projects of uh, a social impact. Um, this is something new here in Costa Rica. There is not other city that has this kind of networks of uh, public and private alliances. And it's been very helpful for us uh, to promote this kind of projects uh, and take advantage of the different opportunities that the private sector has. Um, this is it that I wanted to share with you. And I, I really uh, appreciate very much the opportunity that uh, you have given to me uh, to share a little bit what we do in our city. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Mucho uh, <laughs> gusto. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of enthusiasm about the Brujas in the uh, in the te in the uh, web chat there, and some uh, appreciation from Apple. <laughs> so thank you very much. That adds another layer to 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 the discussion so far.